What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. Now let's talk about Rondo, Quando, Quando Rondo, and celebrity gangsters, right? Which is, is kind of what he was, it seems. So he, up until recently at least, claimed Rolling 60s Crip. Rolling 60s Crip is a very old, very well-established neighborhood uh, down in the L.A. area, and uh, been around for a long time. But they also have people that claim Rolling 60s out there in Georgia, where Rondo's from. And what connection there is or what level or whatever, who knows, not my business, not, not my politics and, and not really relevant to the point here. What is relevant is he's not from LA, right? He's not from the Rolling 60s neighborhood. Uh, so he blows up, he's a rapper, he's making his little money. He's got various beefs with people in other states, right? But he reps, you know, he reps this hood in, in his music, right? That, that adds to his, to his gangsterism, so to speak. Right. So he got this beef with this other rapper, like little Dirk or something like that. I don't know. The 60s, some of the 60s dudes from LA is rocking with the dude Dirk. They're not rocking with Rondo, even though Rondo claims to be one of them. He's kind of on the outs. He comes down to LA. They're at a gas station. He's with his homeboy. Um, I don't know if his homeboy identified as a part of any crew or not, uh, but his homeboy gets his head knocked off, right? And, and right in front of Quando. So he gets very emotional. Man, my folks ain't even riding with me. They're riding with the ops, which I think is this other rapper dude. Blah, blah, blah. I'm hanging up the flag. I'm standing I'm on two feet. F everybody, F everything. And I don't have a girl, but I have a good relationship with my BM. Like this very uh, tangent, right? A, a rant, so to speak. Uh, and it's been all over social media the last few days. Now, I don't care about dude's music, right? To be honest, I don't care about the rap beefs. To, to be honest, um, but it brings up an interesting point for me of th this whole idea of celebrity gangsters, right? And this idea of checking in, right? Because ever since this happened, uh, ever since old boy got, got whacked, um, you know, a lot of dudes with, with ties to the 60s allegedly uh, have been coming out on social media. They've been clowning Quando, they've been talking with little not so subliminal things about, hey man, you gonna claim the hood, you don't show no love to the hood. We rock with people that show love to us. You ain't really from here. Some people are saying he hung up the flag. Some people are saying he was never part of the hood to begin with. Um, he's just basically they're making a mockery of him, right? And and I don't necessarily feel feel sorry for dude. I, I mean, I feel bad he watched somebody get killed right in front of him. That is a tragic experience. Uh, I don't wish that on anybody. But but here's the thing, um, you know, I had seen Dub's video uh, that, that he did on this earlier. And as I was looking up, you know, some stuff, trying to get a little bit more background. And he had made a great point, which is like, it used to be, man, you get into music, you get into that stuff. When you're from the hood, you get into music, you get into sports to get out of the neighborhood, not to abandon the neighborhood necessarily, but to get out of, out of, the potholes in the neighborhood, get out of the traps of the neighborhood, right? You don't got to grind no more. You don't got to sell dope no more. You don't got to be on the corner banging no more. You don't need to do those things, right? You could look out for your neighborhood, but you ain't really got to do neighborhood type shit anymore. That's the idea of staying off the porch and staying in the studio. Whereas nowadays it's like cats get into music and as a part of their career and a part of their persona, they adopt this gangsterism. Right. And, and whether it's claiming a neighborhood clear across the country, um, whether it's turning your rap label into a neighborhood, right? Like, like as if now your little rap crew is a gang, uh, which seems to be pretty common in the Midwest and the South in particular. However you go about it, it's like folks that weren't about that life start playing that life in, in music. And in reality, it's supposed to be the other way around. And so what happens is, he gets himself crossed up, right? Because there really is a hood called Rolling 60s. And, and it's a real hood. They got real beef. They got real issues. They got folks that are struggling economically, right? And, um, and, and so you making money off of that name, but not looking out for the people that earn that name, that, that carry on that name right, that, that do the work to have that name. And I'm not promoting gang activity. I'm not celebrating one hood over another or any of that other stuff. Um, but there's a reputation 
right? Uh, and, and there's multiple reputations, uh, but but there's a one of the reputations of the '60s is that they're with the business, right? Uh, so you got people that live a lifestyle to to maintain that reputation, but you're sitting around rapping about a lifestyle that you're not living, um, and, and maybe you you know building a reputation a little bit, but you ain't looking out for the people that are doing the hard work, right? And and that's where this idea of checking in comes in, and and, and I'm gonna do another video on this whole notion of checking in. This is just a quick one. Um, I really think for the most part, Mexicans in terms of, of street gang members is probably the only ones that don't have this check-in policy. And there's a reason for that. Um, and, and so I'm gonna get into that in, in a video, maybe even later on today or, or at least tomorrow. But they want him to check in because they want to extort him, <laughs> right? Is, okay, you out here making money, you're traveling the country, that's fine. But when you come to LA, you got to come to the hood and you got to bless the hood with what you've made, right? It, it is not a, a most often, put it that way, most often. This is not some loving relationship. This is not some reciprocal relationship. This is not some, man, that's my homeboy, right? They don't even know you, but you're making money off of the name. You got to pay royalties for that. You got to pay dues for that. So no, ain't nobody sweating you when you're out there making money, but they're going to sweat you when you come around and, and don't bring that money. It's not about necessarily bringing the respect. I've heard some folks online, like, come around, man, kick it, pop a bottle, this and that. It, you'd be kind of foolish, honestly, to, to go around and do that, right? Because you're not that important. Uh, you're a meal. That's what you are. When you run around rapping and you rap about these neighborhoods, and a lot of times it happens, like I said, with blood and crypt neighborhoods uh, based in the LA area, you run around woofing all that stuff, you're a meal. They don't care about you. They care about your money, right? And you won't have to pay to have this career. Now, if you come up in that neighborhood as a rapper, then, then perhaps it works a little bit different. But to be quite honest, based on what's happened in recent history with other rappers, um, Nipsey included from, from the same area, it really don't even matter if you come up there, right? Um, Robin is the new, not the new, but, but Robin is the primary hustle now, right? Selling dope and doing all that stuff. It happens, but there ain't a lot of money in that anymore. No money in the dope game, right? Government took that over. Um, so it, it, it's Robin, just robbing folks, robbing people, robbing stores, robbing whatever you can. And you run around with all this jewelry on and, and you run around with all this money. Nobody care about you. They care about your money. And uh, and, and so everybody not going to be patient to take payments, man. Right. And which reminds me, there was this, this jeweler from uh, Chicago, right? Draco or something like that. He just got shot down. He just got killed uh, Memorial Day weekend in, I think it was Houston, right? And he was out there and he's promoting his stuff. He meets with Boozy Badass and all these dudes at this concert. He's at the concert flexing big time. And shockingly out in the parking lot, he gets gunned down and robbed, right? It's, it, you can't do this stuff, man. You, you got this money, but you can't do these things without consequences. In some sense, in this sense at least, the streets are undefeated. Um, they will catch up with you, right? And and it's it, these dudes ain't built for that. Really, nobody's built for it. Even if you're from the hood, you ain't built for that, man. We're not built to get robbed and shot down. None of us are, right? None of us have been in our former lifestyles or, or in the future. And so, but these hoods will let you do this. And there's other rappers out there that flaunt red rags or flaunt blue rags and flaunt their neighborhoods and this and that. And if you think that those people are not paying, you're sadly mistaken. Even if they're really from the hood, you're still paying. Now that, then you might be paying because those are your loved ones, right? Like that's actually folks you came up with. But let you decide not to pay and watch what happens. Like you're going to pay regardless. Um, and, and that's just how it works. In the Exo Creep interview I did, you know, he he was talking about getting a rapper for the neighborhood. Rapper blows up, rapper makes money, rapper buys guns, 
rapper buys bullets, and um, and now you can gangbang. Right now, the hood is in a better position to bang on folks because the rapper's financing the lifestyle, and uh, and and that's what's happening now, right? But some of these rappers ain't really from that. They just want that because it helps sell money. Um, I, I did a video, you know, a while back about Dizzler, right? And it's Dizzler just setting people up to get killed. You know what I mean? Um, because you get out of jail and you rap with them and you stand a very good shot of getting your head knocked off, man. And But they pump this up, though, right? You got to show social media clout. You got to show that you got a hood behind you before they'll even mess with you, right? You got to show that you got some kind of a record. You have to demonstrate these things. That's your sales pitch to, to get on these platforms, to get these deals, right? So who's at fault there? Because you're coming up, you want to make it. That's what's required to make it. That's, that's, those are the qualifications, right? You want the job, these are the qualifications. So now you have folks out there trying to get those qualifications, but it's real people losing real lives in the process. Real people catching real cases in the process. But these, these rap labels, they're making a fortune. They make more money when you die than they do when you're alive anyway. So they don't care. It's all good for them, right? And there's a hundred other motherfuckers lined up to do the same thing. So this whole celebrity gangsters, man, if you want to get into music, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you want to talk about the realities of your lived experience? That's fine. You want to talk about what you've heard? You never really lived it, but you heard it. Okay, cool, right? Do you. Um, but know your boundaries. Know your boundaries and know that you're going to be accountable for what you talk about. So you talk about a lifestyle, you will be accountable to that lifestyle one way or another, whether you like it or not. You are going to be accountable to what you're speaking on. And... Uh, and it seems like in recent years, and, and I don't see the trend stopping, that oftentimes is an indictment if you're lucky. Um, but most of the time you get killed, man. So so all that flexion costs. And the streets is hungry. Everybody's looking for a meal. And and a lot of these rappers run around advertising that just they're like a Brinks truck with no security. Come on, man. And so anyways, help others move in excellence, man. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. And just be careful, man. Be careful. It, it stop dropping your locations and, and stop running around trying to show up all the stuff that you have, man, because there's a lot of people that don't have it. And a lot of people that do have stuff, they got it off the blood of somebody else, you know? And then it's going to be your turn. You guys take care, man. I'll drop another one soon.